all eyes are watching and we've got to go out there and perform and prove what we can do to them. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. We are back for another week and I hope every single one of you have had a really good weekend. Now of course, Monday means we're going to take a look at all of the results over the course of the weekend. Four games in the Premier League, four games in the FA Cup, plenty of goals and plenty of talking points. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So we're going to start with the games in the Premier League and we have to go right back to Friday night. And this was a big game. Fulham against Leeds United. A big, big opportunity for Fulham to get that game in first and climb out of the relegation zone and put the pressure on everybody above them. But they lost. Um, this was a good win for Leeds United. Um, they took the lead. Patrick Bamford is having a great season, to be fair. Um, put them in the lead, Fulham equalised and um, Leeds were able to get the second goal and uh, win the game. And, you know, like I was saying, that's a really, really big, um, you know, defeat for Fulham because these are the kind of games, with all due respect to Leeds United, where they've got to look at and say, yeah, we're going to win this game. We've got to. They've been to the likes of Anfield most recently and won. And if they're going to, you know, survive in the Premier League, they have to get these home victories. Um, so, yeah, that's a tough one to take for them. But uh, a good victory for Leeds United. Um, going into the Saturday games, and this was a big game at the bottom of the table. Brighton against Newcastle. And Brighton absolutely slapped Newcastle United. If there's one team that I feel could drop into that relegation zone... Um, at the expense of Fulham, it's Newcastle. They are in absolute freefall. Steve Bruce is so out of his depth, it's untrue. Um, Danny Welbeck scored a brilliant goal in this game as well. Mo Pai was on the score sheet. Um, and yeah, Brighton, big, big three points for them. They'll be absolutely buzzing about that. And that just lifts them a little bit further away. And gives them a bit of breathing space. But so many games still to go. West Ham against Arsenal. <laughs> oh, what on earth do I say about this game that I haven't already said. 3-3. Free, free. Absolutely staggering. West Ham were 3-0 up with inside 30 minutes. And then for the next hour of the game, Arsenal completely and utterly dominated. And I look at it and I say, OK, we came back from 3-0 down. Fair play for having a bit of fight in your... It still doesn't mean that I'm not annoyed and disappointed. But we should have won the game. The chances we had, even at 3-3 with 10 minutes to go. Pepe in particular had two chances. Got to take them. Got to get the three points, but we didn't. Um... West Ham are a great team this season. They're doing really well. But um, why can't Arsenal play like that when it's nil-nil? Why can't we be so aggressive and on the front foot in that manner? Because we'd wipe teams, you know, to pieces if we play like that. Staggering. But um, I've said all I can say on that matter, that's for sure. Um, last game was the evening kickoff and it was Aston Villa against Spurs and this was a much needed 2-0 win for Spurs. Um, Aston Villa look a completely different team without Jack Grealish. Um, I suppose you could say a one-man team but I think that would be a little bit unfair when you think about the season the likes of Emi Martinez and Ollie Watkins have had. But yeah, they lose that spark and their captain and they just don't look like the same side. Um, Spurs back to winning ways for them. But I suppose you're going to have to talk about the second goal. Harry Kane from the penalty spot. And what I find staggering is the way the media do not say a word about the penalty that was awarded on Kane. I've looked at it a few times. It looks to me like Kane has kicked him not the other way around. Like, 
when people were having a debate over the Lacazette penalty last week, everyone's saying, no, 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 it shouldn't be a penalty, blah, 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 blah. As soon as Harry Kane's involved, everyone thinks it's a penalty. Like, you're not allowed to criticise England's golden boy. Balls the absolute life out of me. But, um, yeah, Spurs get that victory. Um, in terms of uh, the Premier League table, what does that do? Of course, there's... Um, you know, certain movement um, up and down, top and bottom. Um, Fulham, they are, of course, sitting in the relegation zone still on 26 points. Newcastle just above them on 28. If Fulham would have got that victory, that would have been above Newcastle. Newcastle do have a game in hand on Fulham, as do Brighton and Burnley. Um, but Brighton are on 32 and Burnley are on 33. Southampton are also on 33, um, but of course they were not in action um, in the Premier League over the weekend, and we'll get onto that in a moment. But still, so much more to play for. Fulham have got eight games left, 24 points to play for. They could be a massive 24 points, but yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. West Ham, they stay in fifth place, uh, 49 points. Liverpool. Um, still behind them. Obviously, they're going to be playing um, and get that chance to, you know, get level on points with them. But I don't know, man. It's going to be so tight around there. And what actually happens this season when you look at it? Staggering how tight everything actually is. But um, I think the only thing that we can look at and say it's done is Man City with a title. Everything else still to play for. Uh, we're going to go to the FA Cup action. Um, of course, it's the quarter-final stage. Um, Everton against Manchester City. And uh, Manchester City, they won, of course. Um, but they certainly, you know, had to work hard for it. Everton, uh, very dogged and very determined. But Man City, they're just a different outfit this season. They're phenomenal and they just keep going on and on and on. Um, and it's another semi-final for them. I think they'll be quite happy that they don't have to face Arsenal this time because the last two semi-finals they've reached, they've played Arsenal and they've lost them. Um, Bournemouth against Southampton. Brilliant win for Southampton, 3-0. Um, and they are in the semi-finals of the FA Cup and they will look to reach another FA Cup final. Last time they did, uh, the finals were played in in Cardiff at the Millennium Stadium and they actually played Arsenal and they lost that one 1-0 um, but that was a brilliant result for them uh, Bournemouth they'll concentrate on trying to get back into the Premier League they've had a good run but Southampton worthy winners uh, going to Sunday's games Chelsea against Sheffield United um, I see bits of the game and it was quite comfortable for Chelsea um, took an own goal to take the lead and then Zayec scored in injury time. But given the changes and everything else, Sheffield United, look, they just want to finish this season. They just want it over and done with and just start planning for next year and everything else. But Chelsea, another semi-final for them. Leicester against Manchester United. And uh, Manchester United are not going to have to worry about the semi-final stage this time. Because Leicester won this game 3-1 and deservedly so. Ian Acho with a couple of goals. Um, Greenwood actually equalised for Manchester United. But I tell you something, I think this result's been coming for a while for Manchester United. And um, Leicester fully deserved. Absolutely superb. And uh, when you talk about the semi-final draw, because it's already been made, it's going to be Leicester against Southampton. One of those two is going to be in the FA Cup final. Because the other semi-final, of course, is Manchester City against Chelsea. That's going to be a tasty semi-final. But Leicester, Southampton, it's a big opportunity for one of those two. Um, Leicester will look and hope that they can get some players back, fit and available. Um, but yeah, look, that's a brilliant win for them. They were worthy winners over Manchester United. And again, you're starting to see it already, especially on social media. Oli out. Um, they're not happy with the way that they're playing. And um, unless they can get something from the Europa League, 
they're going to be uh, trophyless again. But um, yeah, not a great day for them. But a brilliant victory for Leicester. Um, so there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.